years? Uh, we moved in September 2015, so we're past our third year, and we're wow. close to three and a half years. See how fast time goes when you get old. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I could, you know, you know, sort of go back to before September 2015. Yeah. The Interfaith Council was running two programs out of the old municipal building in downtown Chapel Hill, a facility for home for men experiencing homelessness, as well as a community kitchen. And at that time, since we had residences, we were serving three meals a day, every day of the year. Now, when the, the men moved to the new location that we built, we didn't have to serve breakfast anymore. And now we're serving at the community kitchen in downtown Chapel Hill, lunch seven days a week and dinner five days a week. Mm. So our core community kitchen program is that's what we're doing now. And when we bring it back to our new building in Carborough, We'll be serving those 12 meals a week, but when you add it up, you know, 12 meals a week, a little bit more than 100 on average a day, we're serving 40,000 cooked meals. And as you said, I've had personal experience and heard others say these are very good meals that come from a variety of sources the foodstuffs, including sometimes prepared food from the UNC dining halls. And you know, the, when the semester's closed down, I'm sure Church World Service folks know that the through your partnerships with other sponsoring agencies throughout the country, the variety of food that an agency like Interfaith Council can collect from within its local community yeah. is quite, you know, quite broad. Oh, and and we, a lot of fresh stuff. That was what's well, fresh stuff. Yeah. So, so again, now we so the men do that in that facility for. Uh, now for a little bit over three years. So they get the three field. meals a day? They, we have a community kitchen there. They get, you know, that's a more, that they also provide meals there. That's but the cool. main focus now IFC, since our main reason to do all this effort to raise money from the community, to build a new facility, the new community house um, um, for the men experiencing homelessness, and the food first for our food security programs, one of the driving forces was that instead of being in one building in downtown Chapel Hill, it just wasn't up to the task. The building yeah. was built in 1938. Our board recognized, other community um, leaders recognized, you know, let's get the ISC in um, buildings purpose-built, purposely designed, and built for these specific functions. Yes. We're now blessed through the generosity of the community. Uh, and the university, because the university made the land available. Did they? I didn't know the that. The land available. I'm yeah. glad to hear something good, since we're all kind of bad at the university yeah. for many things lately. Well, in <laughs> that time, in 2008, they, they acquired a parcel of land there on the corner of Homestead Road and Martin Luther King Boulevard, ah. where the old Duke Power um, multi-purpose center was. Yeah. And we have a lease of that for the university and state and through the city. And that's where we operate the new IFC at SECU for one of our major donors, the SECU Foundation Community House. And we had to raise a little bit more. Than, well, thank you for being mm -hmm. pleased. I've been a longtime partner. You know, you can't as a nonprofit do the kind of services we do. You know, we have we rely on a lot of partnerships yeah. with existing agencies, institutions in the community. Yeah. Of course, our volunteers and our donors. There's a lot of collaboration to go to make this work. Including the, the you know, one time, one day events like crop walk, all the way up to ongoing participate or just, um, collaborations. Yeah, and I would think that it was now thinking about the university that if there's like medical needs, I wonder if there's not a, some tie-ins because that would be good, good training for some. Well, again, actually, I want to mention a couple of things about that at the um, the new community house. We have a relationship with Piedmont Health Services. We have a both a medical exam place. room and a dental operatories room. So we're able to yeah. provide that sort of primary care to the individuals who are in our residential programs. Right. But speaking of that, I recently spoke to someone, a UNC faculty member, and we're hoping in our new facility, let me just sort of turn it to our new building, Food First. Sure. That we're, we've designed, we've had approved by the city, we're closing in on our $5.6 million fundraising goal. Hooray. We're within a million dollars of that. We have a couple of major asks still out that if they say yes at 100% level, 
will be a lot closer to reaching our goal. But we're still accepting donations. But we know, and we want to move in there, stabilize our program, stabilize our food pantry in the new building, you know, get our community kitchen up and running well. But once they're really up and running well, we do hope we have the opportunity to um, do more community educational programs oh. in the facility with our kitchen, maybe around nutrition, you know, budgeting for food. Yes. And I heard from a falconer that hopes to maybe do some, and I don't remember the precise term, but where you really, maybe some medical students might come in and teach nutrition. In the medical training, nutrition mm. might be more, you know, chemistry and, you know, that kind of yeah. objective analysis. But when you really want to bring nutrition down to folks who are maybe not used to, who are having dealing with food security issues, how do you translate that you know, scientific knowledge about mm. nutrition into preparing meals mm. in your home in a way that is very positive and learning experience for the folks that attend the class? Mm -hmm. So we do, again, going back to partnerships, hope to make partner with folks who can use our facilities and the people who are food pantry members to improve their you know, circumstances, not just by, in addition to getting food from the food pantry and meals at the community kitchen, you know, get some workshops and training as well. Yeah, I mean, because look at even all of us mm -hmm. are learning because it's been such a change in what's healthy and what's not healthy mm -hmm. from how we grew up. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's a constant learning thing. And if you're struggling, uh, you know, with a family or a, a job, uh, it takes time to read those articles, get that information. So that that could be wonderful. And also, a lot of people never did learn, you know, some basic things in, in cooking or how to how to shop really to get you know, like a, the the use of beans. A lot of people didn't didn't learn those old old ways of cooking where you can do well, it from scratch and it's not that hard. And one. One thing that may surprise folks in the audience, and it surprised me, when I first was there about 10 years ago, you know, we have a holiday meal distribution mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving and, you know, Christmas and the yeah. year-end holidays. And we provide, you know, food for a family, whether it's a family of one or two or four or five. But we've started over the years doing more fresh food and produce, mm -hmm. thanks to, sort of similar to the Church World Service story, when some of your original uh, donors or benefactors were farmers who had excess surplus. Uh, folks out there in the audience that just know about porch and table may know about farmer food share in our community, mm -hmm. which is working with the farmers and the farmer, um, farmer's market networks to get produce that those farmers you know, maybe can't bring to market or have excess of, and some of that is delivered to our food pantry on a weekly basis. So we know at the new facility, in addition to being able to have the capacity to serve up to 1,000 more meals a month, which is a substantial increase, we're going to have the cold storage for additional right. produce, uh, proteins that need refrigeration. Mm -hmm. So we think we're going to, be able to increase the amount of food we have by 25%, primarily for having more storage and other mm -hmm. for, the, for the fresh produce and the uh, dairy products and the protein products you know, that need refrigeration. So yes. we're really stepping out the standard at the and new food right. first of what we can do. People don't think about that storage in an old building that mm -hmm. doesn't have much space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have a bunch of canned goods, you can just have, if you have shelves, you can right. stack them up in shelves. But if you have fresh stuff, mm -hmm. you need some cold storage. And if that's limited, then space itself is limited. And we're getting more sources to bring that in. So yeah. we're sort of matching, our, you know, increasing our capacity with new um, opportunities to get food from places like Farmer Food Share and Weaver Street Market. So um, for, for those who are depending now on interfaith, it's going to be some disruption with uh, having to go uh, somewhere else for a while while the construction's going on, but there's going to be that reward absolutely. at the end where there's going right. to be more. If, if I could, with that, you're right. By the end of this month, we plan to relocate all our operations from downtown Carborough back to the old municipal building in downtown Chapel Hill the last full week of March. We'll be you know, closing down for a couple of days, packing up, wow. moving, Big. putting everything back in place, 
And Me April too. 1st, we'll open doors in a new location. And once we, you know, we want to be out of that building, so once we raised our fundraising goal and we're ready to start construction, there's no obstacles. Wait a minute, Alan, I just looked at the time and it's okay. run away from me. Mm -hmm. Roberta, it, it's getting, it's about the time you want to leave, but before you leave, you want to have a, a last word you want to get in there? Absolutely. Um, I'm so excited about what Alan is sharing um, about the good, good stuff that's happening at the IFC. And I hope that um, your listeners will, feel, will really get excited about it as well. Um, you know, we talked earlier about um, this community being an affluent community, and um, oftentimes we don't think about, um, or maybe we, we think that poverty is far removed from us when the reality is it's all around us. And, um, you know, I think often about um, the, the bus driver, the person who drives our kids to school, um, the waiter, waiters and waitresses that serve us when we go out to eat. Um, people that work in places where we shop, like Walmart and Target. Um, many of these uh, uh, men and women are, are wage earners. And um, in a community such as this, where the fair market rent is a little over $900 for a two-bedroom apartment, if you're earning minimum wage, I don't care how you do the math, it just doesn't add up. And so what the IFC does is to help to stretch that budget mm -hmm. so that families are able to supplement whatever they, they earn uh, with uh, and have the opportunity to come and get nutritious food for, um, for their children. And, um, and when that happens, then kids um, go to school and their, their bellies are full and they come to school ready to learn. And when kids come to school ready to learn, they don't disrupt the learning of other children who are there. So to that, to that, um, in that manner, are, um, we are so connected. We are connected in, in ways that we may not even really think about all the time. Mm. So having said that, um, crop, the Crop Hunger Walk is one source of funding for the IFC. This year, we want this to be the biggest Crop Hunger Walk ever in this community. We want walkers, so we want people. We want, we want feet on the ground. We want to have the biggest, um, largest um, participation ever. Um, and then we want this to be, our, to be our biggest fundraising year. And so, the crop walk is going to be exact the date? So it's on Sunday, next Sunday, March 24th. Okay. Um, we will start, um, we will gather at the um, uh, town commons. Um, facility um, in the uh, Carborough. large the, in Carborough in the large um, gathering area so we'll be there around one o'clock um, we will have lots of entertainment um, we have music um, we have educational activities for children I mentioned earlier it's a family friendly event so invite your your friends your neighbors your co-workers bring your kids um, tell folks at church and let's come out together. I, I'm, I'm counting on this to be good weather next Sunday. Of course. It, <laughs> how could it be otherwise? Absolutely. And so we want our folks to come together and just stand together and, and, and speak with one voice that um, poverty and hunger is not acceptable for any family in this community. And uh, when we come together, we're so much stronger and we're, so, uh, we're, we're that much um, um, we're, we're, we're further along in the process of making change in our community and making sure that every man, woman, boy, and girl has adequate nutrition. And so, um, uh, on behalf of Church World Service, I thank you for allowing the, uh, us the opportunity to come and just share a little bit about the work that we do that we are so passionate about. Um, and we're really counting on the support of the community next Sunday um, for the Chapel Hill Carborough Crop Hunger Walk. Also, um, we are um, taking donations online, so there is a website where folks can go and, um, and donate, um, and it is at uh, crophungerwalk.org forward slash Chapel Hill, North Carolina, uh, Chapel Hill, NC, I'm sorry. Um, a crophungerwalk.org forward slash, forward slash Chapel Hill, NC. Chapel Hill and C. Okay. And in historically, uh, this walk has raised more than 50% of the walk income online. So there's this big 
Uh, there's a lot of energy around online fundraising in this community, and we hope that we continue that this year. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I, I'm so pleased that you made explicit that remark about a lot of times when we're talking about people needing that help, uh, these are the working poor. Absolutely. They're, they're, they could be working full time, they could be working two jobs. Absolutely. But, but when rent is as expensive as it is, and food is as, as expensive as it is, mm -hmm. and transportation, yes. uh, all of that, yes. uh, that uh, uh, even working two jobs and, and, and two, two people in the, two workers in the family, Absolutely. it still needs, you need that extra help to make those dollars stretch so that you can have sufficient food. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's such yeah. an important point. Yeah. And you think, we think about, you know, all of the things that come along with just um, basic living, um, our um, housing and and um, child care if you have children, transportation and health care, and um, just those basic things, utilities, the cost of utilities. The utilities. <laughs> I forgot to so mention all those. All those things add up. Yeah, um, they add up to and, way too much. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And so we, we do believe that um, as a community, we have a responsibility. We have, we're so fortunate um, to live uh, the lives that we live. And, yeah. and so we have a responsibility to lend a hand to, to our neighbors when we know that they're in need. We know there's a need, yeah. um, and um, and so we we thank you all for responding to that need. Well, we're trying to get the word out, and again, this is going to be next. There's a, a week's delay, so next week, right before that Sunday, it's going to be on the People's Channel on Tuesday at noon. It's going to be on Thursday night at ten. And it's going to be on Friday morning at 6, so that'll be right, a good reminder. Plus, after Friday, it's going to be on YouTube. Go to WYLPF, WILP Wake Up Call, and you'll be able to get to the, tonight's show by this weekend. So we'll, we'll get the word out as best we can because we want to support and totally, uh, I'm so pleased that you could come and uh and we'll do all of us do our part to get the word out to people. Thank you. And Roberta, thank you for coming from thank so you, far. Lori. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> so anytime that you need to leave, you have to push the green button to get out the door because okay. we're locked in. Okay. Thank you. I've got to give She's a mom. She's got to go take care of things. So uh, Alan is still here. We have just a few more minutes before the end of the show. And uh, Alan, I'm, I'm so glad it's been a while since I've, I've seen you. We know each other from way back, hearing about um, housing, um, that the cooperative housing, and, uh, um, and, and I'm very happy to see you again. And so tickled that you're working for such a wonderful organization like Interfaith Council. Well, thank you, Lori, and thanks to the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. Thank you for giving for, that in. For being a, you know, I mean, I knew when I, I didn't know right away that that was one of the many things you're involved with, Lori, but uh, as I came to IFC, we've crossed paths at IFC and with this agency, yeah. or with this league, shall yeah. we say, and y'all yeah. you know, sort of harken back to even an earlier era of inspiration. Um, yeah. Than IFC. Our inspiration comes from the ferment of the early 1960s, and y'all's the, the league comes from the ferment in the, I guess, the First World War. Uh, but it was we're we're very happy to be here to let folks know about Food First. Yeah. We're quite pleased to you know to partner with Church World Service on the Crop Hunger Walk. As so well. you're still trying to raise money. We are still trying to raise money. We will welcome donations. Our website is yeah, let's you know, put that www ifcweb.org and okay. forward slash food first as if it was one word um, ifcweb.org forward slash food first that's our capital campaign website there will be opportunities to raise money we accept donations of all amounts we certainly rely on some large donations but we'll, and we have I guess about 450 donors between individuals and households, congregations, businesses, um, foundations, and this time, unlike the raising money for housing, you know we all know the social safety net, the 
terms of government support is not as strong as it once was. No. And it's never been, you know, for housing there was some funding sources available for the new community house. For the, you know, food security issues there's not really capital available from the federal or state government to help with their building. So we're relying more at this time on individuals and foundation support. Yeah. So if you ha have the means to make a donation, we would most definitely welcome it at ifcweb.org forward slash food first. And you can also learn about our campaign. You can see the drawings for the building. You can learn about the statistics. We we're talking earlier about you know the poverty level and the income disparity. Well, there's about 20,000 citizens in Orange County who we consider food insecure. Which means they don't have enough, which is like one in seven persons, or one in um, one in five residents, up to one in five children are food insecure. They don't have reliable access to a sufficient quality of affordable food on an ongoing basis. Yeah. So that's a tremendous need. That's why we serve forty thousand meals a year at the community kitchen, yeah. thirteen thousand bags of groceries. Yeah. And serve about 3,500 individuals. And so what the I want to mention, is here. Ellen, is with those meals, what's so wonderful about it, there's no, you don't have to prove anything. That's correct. You walk in the door and you're invited to the table. That's right. And they don't, and I, I've seen guys come in from a construction that's site. Right. Yes. Uh, I've seen people come in with their kids, you know, and that's what's so nice is no, you don't have to prove that you need it. You just show up and, and, and you get taken care of. That's, that's correct at the community kitchen. There is a little bit of eligibility requirements at the food pantry, for the food which pantry. is a different opportunity, mm -hmm. I mean, a different way to yeah. relate to that individual. When you're serving meals, our doors are open. The door is open, and that, that, was, that was beautiful. That, you know, and, and I just want to get that word out for anybody who's listening who, who's having trouble with food. You, you, don't have to, you, you, you have your dignity, Mm -hmm. And everybody's treated with dignity. That, that is really very important to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. The, the dignity. And I think the new facility, Food First, will give you more opportunity for that to um, be more present. Yeah, in and, our you, space. and you have your choice. I mean, they, it's like it's like going to a buffet. You know, you you don't have to. It's not just this one set thing. There's a variety of some foods, and you can. I want the salad mm -hmm. or don't want the salad. You know, want dessert, don't want dessert. I want the, you know, and that again, it's all treating people with that kind of dignity that they're human beings. Oh, our time, Alan, our time is is run over. Uh, Alan, I'm so glad you could come and and represent Interfaith Council, and um, uh, it's good to catch up with you. Uh, and we, our hearts are are with you, and uh, we're. This is going to be out all next week, hopefully helping, helping the situation along.